Welcome back to Gloved Up Garage. In this episode of the Lincoln Rebuilding Our Town Car, I'll be working on the interior pieces. I'm still waiting on getting this onto a frame rack, and I'm still in talks with a couple of shops about trying to get it worked into their schedule. So for now, I've got to occupy myself with some of the other stuff that needs to be done, some of the smaller details. I've gone ahead and taken the airbag out of the steering wheel, mainly just got tired of fighting with it. I didn't want to cut it up or anything. It's a really easy process on these cars. There's a plug on this side of the steering wheel and another plug on the other side. You pop those out, there's a couple of bolts that hold the airbag in, and then you can see there's a, this yellow wire here and a couple other little wires, connectors. Unplug those, airbag comes right out, you can get it out of your way. The next thing I need to work on is the airbag module. And I know I had mentioned that in another video, a previous video about needing to get it out of the car, but basically behind that piece of carpet right there, and I'll have to pop the ashtray out, the airbag module sits up inside the dash right there. I verified that on the service manual website, so I just need to get up there and get it out. Then the final piece of the interior is the seat belt. And you can see the seat belt's just laying in the seat. It does not retract because it's locked in place. So in a lot of modern vehicles, when you have an accident and the airbag system registers an impact, it will lock the seat belt with an explosive charge that keeps the seat belt from retracting back in or going out further. Basically locks you into the seat so that you don't come forward and hit the airbag or go to the other side of the car or come towards this side of the car. You're locked into the seat. Now you can have that reprogrammed just like I can have the airbag module reprogrammed. They can reset that charge, put another charge in it, and it's good to go. But I've already got another seat belt out of another vehicle, so I'll just look to make sure it's clean and good to go, and I'll wind up swapping it in. The, the easiest way to access this seat belt is to get the seat out. I'll have to undo the two bolts up here, two in the back, take the seat out, get this trim off, because it runs all the way down the pillar. You can see where it mounts up there at the top, and then runs all the way down inside behind that piece of trim. So with the seat out of the way, it's gonna be much more easier. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the airbag module. So to get the module, I gotta pop off this piece of trim right here. It said that it's up here under the dash. I still don't see it. I mean, obviously you can see that brackets right there. Uh, I bet that's it right there. Yeah, so this is the airbag module. I'm going to have to pull the carpet back in order to get a better view of it. And it's kind of tough to do while holding the camera, but... Yeah, man, it is really tough to get to. I mean, it's literally right here, so this whole carpet is going to have to roll back. And I'm probably going to have to put the phone down in order to do that, so I'll be right back. It's definitely not easy to get to. I had to pop the ashtray... Um, PowerPoint assembly out. There's a tab here in each corner. You push down on those and pull out and this whole tray comes out. The problem I have is I still can't even get access back here. I can kind of see the tops of the plugs with the flashlight, but I really can't see everything. What I need to do is take this whole piece out and it's actually attached. It's really hard to see on camera because it's dark in here. I don't have any other flashlights with me, but this piece is attached to the brackets right here that hold the ashtray assembly in place. So I'm going to get that out. There's a couple of screws up here and a couple on the back side of this. And hopefully I'll be able to reach that, get this piece out of the way because it's literally right there behind it on the floor. The ashtray assembly is out of the way now and that was definitely no fun. <laughs> For those of you that have done these in the Lincoln, you probably know what I'm talking about, but there's... A plastic tube that runs right here and goes under the floor right here that is basically for the air duct that uh, is on the back side of the center console jump seat whatever you want to call it that brace that runs across right here there's two seven millimeter screws that hold that ashtray assembly in and then uh, there's two up here at the top also plug right there once you get the this last corner over here is tough because of this tube, there's really no clearance. I had to use a uh, ratchet with a long, deep socket on it and basically just lay it right here on the carpet 
and turn it a little bit at a time until I could get it loose enough to work out with my hand. So now that that's out of the way, we can see that silver box right there is our airbag module. And I've got to peel this carpet back because I believe there's either two or four mounting points. I want to get the module un unmounted from the transmission, from the floor of the car, I mean, the transmission tunnel. I want to unmount it before I unplug it, just to make it a little easier to unplug, I believe. So I'll peel this carpet back, get a flashlight up in there, see what we're dealing with, and I'll come back once I've got some more info for you. I was able to round up a flashlight. You can see there is a screw right there. And then you can't see behind this flap of the carpet. Basically, there's another screw right there next to it. Those are the only two screws holding it in. I'm going to get those out, pull the module out. As it turns out, there's three screws. <laughs> you can see. So this is oriented in, the, in this direction right here. There's the one screw that you can see in the back corner. There's one in this corner that you couldn't see. And then there was another one that even caught me off guard. So now that I've got that out of the way, unplug the wiring, airbag module is out. So what I'm interested in the most on the airbag module is the part number. If I can find another one with this identical part number, this 3WA or 3W1A part number, if I can find another one with the same number that hasn't been deployed for less than 50 bucks, then that's probably the way I'll go. If I can't find another one that I can verify hasn't been in an accident, um, then I'll probably just send this off to a place called Safety Restore. And they'll actually go in and clear all the codes that are in this module. They'll check all the circuitry to make sure that it'll work if their vehicle is ever in an accident again. And then they'll send it back to me. I'll just have to pay shipping, of course, uh, whatever it costs, which I think for them it's like 50 bucks and then $10 shipping. So about $60, they can reset this module. And then I can put it back in the car, plug all the airbags and everything back up. And I won't have to worry about anything exploding in my face. Finally got a nice day. I've got the doors open, so you might hear my neighbor's chainsaw in the background. Might hear some of the animals we got running around out here uh, making noises. Don't be alarmed. Uh, for now, I went ahead and started on getting the hood prepped. I've got the insulation pad off. There was an underhood light here. A couple of clips that hold that harness. Got that off. Got the hood latch off. Now I just need to go through and get the clips off for the hood latch. These little speed nuts. Got those. And then with the ones over here with the hood hinges actually bolt to the hood. After that, I'll clean all this off. You can see their sticker is still on here. This is like your EVAP, your uh, spark plug info. And this is actually for a 2003. That's what this came off of. Our Lincolns in 04. They're exactly the same, the specs on them. So we'll tape that off. When we go to clean this up, we'll just have that taped off. And uh, when we paint it, we'll leave it taped off and then it, uh, It'll get as close as we possibly can to the edge of the sticker so that it doesn't look like we peeled it off. Normally, I would say I would just buy one. They're anywhere from $20 to $50. It just kind of depends which dealer you order them from. There is a part number on this. You can just call them up and say, hey, I need an emissions sticker. For an 04 Lincoln, you give them your VIN number. They print it out. I don't really want to wait on it. It's not that big of a deal. This isn't going to be a show car, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, as far as painting the underside of this, I'm not going to do it with the pearl. I'm just going to shoot it with the white. If you look at the factory hood, it's a little dark over here. You can see it's mainly white. And in fact, they didn't even really get good coverage. They missed this whole area here where the hood hinge was bolted up. There's not much pearl, if at all, any pearl on this part. I believe when this went down the factory line, I think the hood was closed on it because obviously the outside's got the, the nice shiny pearl uh, finish to it. The inside's very dull, just a base coat, and it's dirty. You see that hood's actually split right there. These are made out of aluminum. So I'm not really worried about the bottom side getting the pearl. I just basically want the white paint coverage to look like it did. And there's the insulation that I took off. I've got that setting up out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. The fenders are stacked up over here. I'll start working on those next. I mainly just wanted to break down some of the easy stuff and get it ready for paint. To repair the outside of that passenger door and the driver's door, I needed to take these lower moldings off. Uh, these things, this so this is the right front molding. You can see it's really large. It's got that aluminum polished trim on it. The way they're held on, there's nuts at the bottom that actually go through the door, and you can get to those easy without taking the interior trim panel off. 
But these upper ones, they actually go through the door and they're hidden by the, uh, the trim panel. You can't see them from the outside. So you have to take the trim panel off, which is what I did. Now, the reason I need to take this off, obviously it's got some damage to the edge of it. I'll probably be able to polish these little scuffs on the edge of that molding. This should clean up when I go to sand it. Not really worried about that. I don't see any other damage to this. Of course, it's covered in dirt. I'll wipe it down. Looks like I might have some scuffs over here. That's gonna be an indicator or something I found while I was taking it apart. You can kind of see there's some scuffs going in that direction there. Let me walk over here, show you guys what I found. That's one of my heaters. All right. So with the door open, took off the trim panel on the inside, went ahead and took the speaker out just to make access. You can see that hole right there through the, the speaker hole and that hole to the right. That's where that molding clips in. There's a couple of screws down here at the bottom, three screws that are hidden down here at the bottom. And then the rest of this is held in with push pins, much different from the Marauder door panel. While I was taking the trim panel off, I noticed this right here. What you're seeing, this is the outer skin of the door, the door shell. When they put these together, there's a machine that wraps the skin around the shell. And that, that is cracks in the paint because there's a dent there. And I noticed that you can't really tell when the trim, that outer molding is on because it's flush against this outer skin. And then right here is all dented in and pushed in. So I knew as soon as I get the molding off, I was gonna be in for a treat and boy was I. There's a massive dent right here. And then there, there's some scrape marks right there that correspond with the molding. What this means, yes, this could be fixed. Along with the dent in the front, that you can see there, the reflection right there. That means this door could possibly have a bent shell and it's going to be a ton of work to straighten. Honestly, for the price of a door from the U-Pole yard, it's not worth the effort. I could probably get a door from a U-Pole yard for less than $100, maybe a couple of door dings, maybe a little bit of rust repair, something minor compared to this. In the grand scheme of things, if you had this door, you took it to a body shop and they said, hey, we're gonna need like eight hours to repair this. The dent in the front is pushed in. That would have to be pulled out, smoothed over. That dent alone is three or four hours. The dent back here, another five to six hours. So it just doesn't make sense economically to try to repair it. To get you a better idea of what these dents look like from the front side, you've kind of seen this one in some of the photos. You can kind of tell the shading right there. And then this dent on the bottom of the door, it's really hard to tell in videos, but you know, it's right in that area, kind of going that direction. I'm starting to question whether I'm gonna need a rear door too. You can see the dent that's right there. If you look at this reflection right here, how it makes a, uh, like a bow shape, that's because the sheet metal is crowned. It's actually peaked right there. It's one of those things it's really hard to get a good picture of. You can see the distortion and the reflection of the Marauder wheel on the panel. And basically there's a, there's a dent right there in the panel. It's kind of pushed upward and the sheet metal is actually coming out right there at the top. I'm going to tear this door down next. I bet I'm going to find some damage down here at the bottom. It's going to lead me to believe I'm going to need a door. These are the, th the, the kind of things that you just can't predict when you're tearing these cars down unless you really know the history of the vehicle. I haven't been in detailed history with the owner of the vehicle. Uh, I've known about little minor things that have happened here and there, but nothing major. So in this case, we may need to get both doors for the right side of the vehicle. I'm gonna get a hold of the guy with the parts car, see if he has uh, some parts available still. The problem with replacing the right rear door, and it's not necessarily a problem, it's just gonna be even more work for me when it comes time to paint it. Trying to find that door that's gonna absolutely match this quarter panel. This car was pretty much garage kept. It was kept out of the sunlight for the most part. Comparatively to a car that was out in the sunlight its entire life, it's probably going to be a little darker. And the fact that it's three-stage paint, the pearl paint, makes it even more difficult to match to, you know, exactly taking a panel off of another car and putting it on this car. 
So you have to do what's called a blend. And basically what'll happen is we'll have door here with new paint, door there with new paint, fender hood and all that stuff with new paint. They'll blend that new paint a little further back onto the quarter panel. Normally not a problem. Because of the vinyl top that this car has, it's kind of a problem. You would normally want to wrap every panel in clear uh, that is exposed. You don't want to break a clear line in the middle of a panel at all. In this case, I've got no choice but to break my clear line right here at the vinyl top. And I can feel someone's already done that. If you see that line right there, I can catch that with my fingernail. That is a clear line. So this quarter panel has been painted once before outside of being painted from the factory. When they painted it from the factory, they would have gone ahead and put the top on uh, over top of the paint. But I can see there's some little minor imperfections in the clear coat. I will probably do the same thing. I'll go ahead and tape this off really well and try to get up under the, that edge the best that I can with masking tape. While this is still wet, once my last coat of clear is on, I'll peel that out and hopefully the clear will kind of flow up into that line a little bit better and seal up against that vinyl and uh, keep any kind of separation from coming out of that panel. Well, the rear trim panel is off and ran into just a couple of hidden things. Uh, one, I've got to buy a new clip that holds the panel on and these white holes that you can see. There's like a little Christmas tree clip that goes in there. The grab handle at the top has a couple of screws underneath the little silver covers on that. Um, the grab handle itself, there's plastic ends on it. They're broken, so I'll have to run by the junkyard and grab one. Or, uh, <laughs> well, I may not have to worry about it. What I discovered, much like the front door, there's hidden damage on the rear door and quite a bit of it. You can see down here at the bottom, there is a pretty good crease, runs right here. The paint is broken right there from an indentation. Same as it is here, I need a rear door. There's too much damage to even try to mess with this. Uh, this kind of looks like a body line, but it's definitely a crease and it bounces. It gets deeper, lighter, deeper. And then with all of this stuff here being visible too, I need a door. I mean, there's just no way around it. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna take off, little quarter panel trim piece here. I would imagine if I had to guess, there's gonna be a dent right about there. And they may have repaired it when they, before they put this on. I can fill a couple of screws on the back side, so hopefully it comes off really easy. And yeah, that'll be the next thing that I'm gonna have to do. It makes me wonder if that's not why the quarter panel was repainted. So I'll take that trim piece off, look at the quarter panel. We'll go from there. Really uh, disappointed to find out that I gotta buy two doors, but it is what it is. Pulled off that little piece of quarter panel trim and there's not much going on underneath of it. There, It looks like there might be a little bit of a dent. It's nothing major, it's nothing I'm really gonna worry too much about. I do near, need to replace a couple of the clips on that little piece of trim, but we'll worry about that later on. It was gonna have to come off anyway in order to blend this quarter when we replace the door. I've also gotta pull the tail light and the bumper, but we'll worry about that a little later once we get a little closer to paint. One last thing I'm gonna grab off that parts car is going to be the positive battery terminal. It is completely corroded. It should look like the negative terminal with a bolt going through it and a nut on the end. This is completely corroded to the point where it doesn't even have a nut. There's no threads left on this. All the coating that's on this is gone and there's just nasty corrosion everywhere. What you'll usually find is this corrosion will start to head back up the wires away from this point because of oxidation. So I will cut this here and get another one off of either that parts vehicle or another donor vehicle, and then I'll splice in these two wires. One of these wires goes to the alternator, the other to the starter. This is so corroded. When I was taking it apart, you can see it's dropped corrosion onto the frame, and then some of this onto the floor, these little spots and stuff, that's actually the corrosion that came off of that terminal and then started to uh, eat into the concrete. So I've got to clean that up. It's just absolutely everywhere under here. I bolt, this unbolts from the fuse box. So you can just take that little 10 millimeter nut off and this comes right off. So 
that will be the last thing that I need to get from that parts car along with the airbag module, which we've already seen how to get that out. Uh, hopefully I can score the doors off of that car. I'm really hoping he hasn't gotten rid of it yet or scrapped it. Otherwise, it's going to be a big trip to a parts yard for us. That pretty much covers everything I can do in this episode for the Lincoln Town Car Rebuild. Still waiting on an appointment for the frame rack, and hopefully we'll get that in, in the next couple weeks. And I've got some doors and some other parts that I need to pick up off of that parts car. Then we can start to make some forward progress on this thing instead of just doing teardown. So for now, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the likes, the comments, and the subscribes. Keep those coming. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay gloved up.